Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills, maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. This video is part one of a three-part series where we will make a pocket. If you're feeling really ambitious or you just honestly need the space, you can make a pair. Um, and we will talk about that later. And if we've all done our jobs correctly, by the end of this series, you will have a completely hand-sewn 18th century pocket. Let's go ahead and get started with the supplies. Pins, needles, scissors, wax, and thread are essential for any project. And today we'll be using unbleached linen thread for construction. You want to choose a weight of thread that is appropriate to your fabric. So if you have a heavyweight fabric, choose a heavier weight thread, a lighter weight fabric, choose a lighter weight thread, and so on. Choosing the right weight thread will just make stitching a lot easier. You will also need your fabric and your pattern, and we'll go over both of those next. Speaking of fabric, for this project, you'll need two pieces uh, measuring about 12 by 18 inches. They don't necessarily have to match, so feel free to check your stash, but we do recommend that you use a sturdy fabric for your project. Pockets get a lot of wear and tear, so stouter fabrics will likely last longer. For our pocket, Angela's pulled some striped linen twill for the front and a really nice blue checked linen for the back. We'll also need a binding of some sort for the edges of the pocket, as well as ties for the waist. We'll be using linen tape for both of these today, but if you want to bind your pocket with fabric, that's another option. We would just recommend that you cut your fabric on the straight of grain, not on the bias. Not only is it more economical to cut on straight of grain, but it's also much more common for the 18th century. If you're not sure how much tape you'll need for your ties, uh, we use a simple math-free method that works for just about everybody. Take a long piece of string and tie it around your waist. Mark or cut the ends of the strings so that they're even and not too long. Untie the string and use the length you marked to measure out your tape. This method can be used for pocket ties, petticoat ties, hoop ties, apron ties, pretty much all the ties. If you need a numerical measure for ordering purposes, hold your string up to a measuring tape and record how long it is. And voila! All right, now that we've got the supplies taken care of, you might be wondering how these pieces of fabric and tape become a pocket, right? <laughs> Magic, my friends. Okay, well, like maybe not magic per se, but mm, some practice, patience, and um, puppies? Yeah, puppies. Right, back to pockets. For this project, there is a pattern that you can download uh, right below this video in the description section, so go ahead and check that out. Um, by the way, huge shout out to Lauren Marangola from Wearing History for her help in digitizing this pattern for you all to easily print at home. And that is actually the first thing that we need you to do. Download the pattern, and here's, uh, here's an important bit, when you go to print it, Remember to print it out at 100% scale or actual size. And this should print out then four pieces of paper that you can attach together, really using whatever attachment method you prefer. Uh, you can staple it, paste it, pin it, really whatever method works for you is fine, so long as the end result is uh, a complete pocket pattern. Then go ahead and cut out your paper pattern of your pocket. You can cut the, the center slit now if you want to, or you can just cut the perimeter of the pocket pattern. Uh, that, is, that is your call, but you wanna have that piece cut out before we move on to the next step. If you plan on washing your pocket, make sure that you've pre-washed your fabric. Keep in mind that your hands are gonna be going in and out of your pocket pretty frequently, and so the pocket holes can get a little dirty. If your fabrics are wrinkly, go ahead and press them flat. And if they're not too thick, you should be able to cut both layers out as one, with one piece on top of the other. Next, we're going to pin our paper pattern onto the two layers of fabric. Uh, you could use pattern weights here if you want to. Here in the studio, we just prefer to use pins. Um, and then you'll cut around the edge. Make sure, though, that you're keeping both layers of fabric as flat as possible. 
especially if they aren't pinned. It may seem kind of inconsequential now because it's just a pocket, but remember that if you're lifting up the fabric, it puts a curve into the fabric. Uh, so it, it kind of stretches it over a curve while you cut it, which means you have one layer that ends up being larger or smaller than the other layer. Uh, and with a pocket, you can kind of get away with some sloppy cutting because you can trim it off later. But if you're doing something more advanced, like say making a man's jacket or a pair of stays, uh, you want to you know use a little more precision there. So it's just a good idea to to kind of practice good habits uh, all the time. We need to unpin our paper pattern from our fabric pieces so that we can repin the pattern to just the top piece of our pocket. If you don't do this because you're one of those people, not that we know anybody like this, who's like, I don't want to unpin everything and then have to repin it, we can't be held accountable if you end up with two pocket tops. <laughs> not that that's ever happened to anyone, I'm sure. I'm sure it has. Um, but you do want to make sure that you are careful to separate your two layers so that you don't accidentally catch one in the other one, or you might be a little bit disappointed. But once your layers are separated and repinned, go ahead and cut your pocket slit. All right, friends, we are at a pretty good stopping point, having gotten all of the prep work done for this pocket. So I think we are going to call it a day. We're going to set this pocket down for now. But join us next time in part two where we will start the actual construction work. So plan on doing some sewing. And as always, thank you for joining us. Until next time, may your stitches be even and your needles be fierce. I'm like, let me record dogs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>